never release a vehicle for service without verifying safe brake operation. Brake components need regular lubrication. Anytime the vehicle is in the shop for a chassis lube, the air chamber bracket and slack adjuster should be pressure lubricated using the specified chassis lubricant. This procedure allows contaminants to be flushed from the slack and should be completed at least every three months or 50,000 miles. Pressure lube air chamber brackets through the grease fitting until grease flows out at the end of the tube or around the slack adjuster splines. Grease must not flow out of the cam head end of the tube. If it does, the seal is defective and must be replaced. Lubricate the slack adjuster as well through the appropriate grease fitting. Every time the drum is removed, or at least every third month, be sure to visually inspect the brake assembly for wear or damage. Detailed component inspections are normally done when the brakes are overhauled or at a minimum every other year. Rather than go through every step in an overhaul right now, Let's walk through a typical brake shoe reline job, and along the way, we'll comment on a few key overhaul procedures. Before you start any brake service, requiring removal of the tire and wheel, you must take the following preliminary steps to ensure your safety. Set the parking brake and block the wheels to prevent any vehicle movement. Raise the axle being serviced with a jack and support it on suitable stands. Never work under a vehicle supported only by a jack. Cage spring-type brake chambers as recommended by the vehicle manufacturer. Remove the axle shaft, outer wheel nut, locking washer, and inner wheel nut as specified in the manual. Gently pull on the drum until the outer wheel bearing comes free. Remove the drum by pulling outboard while rocking from side to side. If the drum does not come off easily, do not risk damage by forcing it. Back off the slack adjusters before continuing. Vacuum all brake dust from the drum and brake assembly before inspection. Never use compressed air to remove brake dust. If necessary, use a greaseless solvent to clean up any spilled oil. In the course of an overhaul, clean all brake parts following sound shop practices. Use a commercially available shop solvent. Gasoline should never be used. It is unsafe in the workshop environment. After cleaning, wipe all parts dry with a lint-free cloth. Parts exposed to road dirt should be cleaned with a wire brush, including the outside of the brake drum. Excessive dirt buildup on the drum can retain heat. Inspect the drum for cracks, heat checks, glazing, grooving, run out and out of round. Heat checking like in the boxed area can often be repaired. Unfortunately, this drum is also cracked and must be replaced. Drums that can be repaired without exceeding the manufacturer's maximum diameter and run out specs may be returned to service. Never reuse a drum if it exceeds the manufacturer's maximum diameter or run out tolerance. To assist you with a quick and simple brake shoe removal, Eaton recommends a notched screwdriver, such as this tool from Snap-on, part number BT518, particularly with the heavier ES brake springs. Using such a tool, pry the shoe away from the cam to stretch the return spring. Remove the cam roller and pin. Repeat these steps for the other shoe and roller pin. Push the lower shoe up toward the cam to unhook and remove the return spring. Lift the upper shoe up over and off of the anchor pin, allowing the lower shoe to come off. Cam rollers and pins, return springs, and retainer springs should all be discarded any time there is evidence of stretching, wear, or damage. Take a moment to inspect the brake linings. Normally, worn blocks will exhibit a tapered profile that is characteristic of the Eaton standard brake design. Note that Eaton ES brakes exhibit different wear patterns because of the lining's pre-designed taper. Always replace brake linings if they are cracked or contaminated. We mentioned earlier that the Eaton Brake Adjustment and Lining Wear Guide can be used to determine when a reline is necessary. The black rectangle on the back of the guide is sized to correspond to the minimum allowable lining block thicknesses for steer axle and drive axle brakes. Position it as required to make a visual comparison of the minimum thickness to the remaining lining. Another check of lining condition 
is to measure from the contact surface to the rivet heads. When worn to within 1 16th inch from any rivet head, the linings must be replaced. This is easily checked by holding the guide as shown and inserting the tab into the shallowest rivet hole. If the end of the tab touches the rivet head before the bottom edge of the guide touches the block, replace the linings. Carefully inspect the shoes any time they're off the vehicle. Look for a bent or cracked web or table, broken wells, loose rivets, or elongated rivet holes. Replace the shoes if any of these signs are present. Check the anchor pin and camshaft roller recesses in the shoe webs for elongation or visible wear. If a shoe span gauge is available, check shoe span and compare it to the specs in the service manuals. Anytime you have the brake shoes off, it's a good idea to check the condition of the camshaft bushings in the air chamber bracket. This can be done quickly and easily by measuring camshaft radial play with a dial indicator. Mount a suitable indicator with the plunger referencing the cam face at 90 degrees to the cam bearing journal. Zero the indicator. Move the cam head radially back and forth and note the maximum reading. In a similar manner, mount a dial indicator at the slack adjuster end of the camshaft and repeat the procedure. Total deflections over 20 thousandths of an inch in either location indicate the need for bushing replacement. The spider should also be inspected any time the brake shoes are off. Check the anchor pin for looseness or grooving more than 31 thousandths of an inch below the original surface. Visually inspect for cracks around bolt holes in the cam area and around the anchor pin. Replace the spider if you see any of these defects. If your camshaft radial play is okay, you normally wouldn't remove the camshaft when doing a reline, but at overhaul you routinely would. So we will quickly show you what to look for. Remove the slack adjuster and camshaft as described in the manual and thoroughly clean the camshaft for inspection. Look for brunelling, cracking, or flat spots on the camshaft head. Replace the camshaft if a ridge can be felt between worn areas and the cam head surface. Examine bushing journals for roughness or corrosion. Check the spline end for cracks and worn or deformed splines. Replace the camshaft if any of these conditions are found. While you have the camshaft out, it's also a good idea to check the air chamber bracket bushings for roughness or wear and all bracket fasteners for proper torque. The guidelines in the service manual will help you determine which components to replace at overhaul. We can't spend a lot of time on the subject, but would like to show you the replacement procedure you'll be doing if your truck flunked the camshaft radial play test. Remove the air chamber bracket as described in the service manual and clean it for inspection. Look for a bent, broken or cracked arm or cracked wells. Drive out the old bushings with a punch. Install new bushings with a suitable piloted driver to the depth specified in the service manuals. New grease seals are installed flush with the end of the tube. Both seals must be installed with the lip side, the side with the spring, facing the slack adjuster end of the bracket. Improperly oriented seals may allow grease to exit the camshaft head end of the bracket and contaminate brake linings. Radial play should be checked after replacing the camshaft bushings. If it is still excessive, replace the camshaft. Before we return to our reline job, it's important to note that for best brake performance and reduced future maintenance costs, Eaton does not recommend brake relining. As lining wears, brake shoes tend to stretch to maintain full contact within the drum during brake application. Because of this tendency to stretch, a reline shoe is likely to result in uneven contact against the drum and ultimately reduce braking performance and excessive drum wear. Instead, Eaton recommends replacing worn shoes with top spec brake replacement kits available through your top spec distributor or a rebuilt brake now available from your closest Eaton authorized brake rebuilder.